with uh, a lot of folks um, uh, uh, who you know well. Of course, you know our Attorney General, Ashley Moody, who's here with us. You know our Surgeon General, Dr. Joe Latipo. <laughs> we have our ACA Secretary, Simone Marsteller. And we have representatives, Burton, Hawkins, Tomko, Killebrew, and Melanie Bell here with us today. And then we've got uh, Bob Lavalley right here, who's going to talk about some of the, the, the issue that we're, um, we're talking about here today. Um, some people may remember this, but it's been so long. One of the things we did when I first became governor is we wanted to find ways to uh, access cheaper prescription drugs for Floridians, because that has been something that we pay an arm and a leg for in the United States for quite some time. And that was when President Trump was in office. That was even before we had the Biden inflation where everything's gone up. Uh, but this was something that continues to really pinch people's budgets. And it pinches the state of Florida's budget. Because in our programs, when we do with health programs, it causes the cost of those to go up dramatically. And so we were trying to figure out ways, OK, what can we do uh, to make an impact? Of course, now you see, you know, particularly over the last year and a half, You've seen big increases in groceries. You've seen big increases in energy, utilities, rent, all these different things uh, with the Biden inflation. And so I think the drugs and being able to give some relief there it now more than ever is something that's very, very important. But back in 2019, my first year in office, we wanted to find ways. So we're limited as the state because a lot of this is controlled by the federal government. Obviously, Big Pharma is very powerful in Congress and with uh, different people in Washington, and so they're able to structure this a lot of times in ways that benefit them over the average American. Uh, but we want to say, is there something a state could do? Well, we found there was a provision of a law from 20, 2003 that said states could apply to HHS to purchase drugs from Canada. And so these are the same drugs that you purchase here. They're just like you know, 80% cheaper or 75% cheaper. And it's all because, you know, basically American consumers underwrite the entire pharmaceutical industry. They get cheaper prices everywhere else outside the United States. And then we basically fund all the research and development and everything that goes into producing these. And so it's definitely inequitable. And so we said, if we can use this program and be able to contract, even if we just started with state agencies contracting, we'd be able to save, you know, $100 million, $200 million for taxpayers. And then obviously, you know, that will trickle down to consumers and we would be able to expand this. So I went up to Washington. I met with President Trump. I told them this is something that's really good. And a lot of people were telling him no because you had pharma doesn't like it. Uh, I actually was, you know, had a, had a discussion in the Oval Office with the president and people at HHS and these other agencies, and they were saying no, no, no. And basically, they tried to say it's a safety issue, but, you know, people use drugs in Canada. This isn't Djibouti. I mean, it's a safe country. And so you can get the – you can get drugs and do. So – but it, it does involve relabeling and make sure that everything is, is, is accurate and, and they're bona fide pharmaceuticals and not counterfeit. So there is things to do, but that's something that's easily attainable. And so uh, President Trump said, yes, you know, I will approve. And so we developed, so the legislature passed this law saying Florida needs to develop a plan. We created this, this plan, and it took, a, it took a long time uh, to be able to get that just right. We sent it up to Washington during the Trump administration for approval from the FDA. So this was in the, the latter part of 2020, almost two years ago, that they've had this. And, and we didn't know, like, when, when Biden came in, whether this would be something that he would support or not. He actually said last summer he signed an executive order saying he wants to, to approve these plans for states. And so that was, I think he did that in like June or July of 2021. And so here we are now. Our application has been, we were the first state to do this. Other states followed Florida's model. It's just been sitting at FDA for, for months and months and months, actually probably over a year, year and a half, and no action. And so. Biden is saying he wants this for consumers, 
but yet his administration is not willing to act to be able to prove it so that people uh, have access to, uh, to more affordable pharmaceuticals. And so, you know, our view is, is okay, uh, when, when he said last summer that he supported it, we were hoping that we would get an answer. Uh, I think it's even hard. I mean, some of these folks will tell you, I, I, like it's hard to even meet with people at the FDA. Uh, very dismissive, um, you know, very arrogant with how they've gone about this stuff. Uh, but our view is we need to keep pressing forward. So after 630 days, you know, we still sit here waiting uh, for an answer. And so it's our view that we've waited long enough. Uh, and so today we're taking action. Uh, the state of Florida has now filed a lawsuit against the FDA. Uh, they have unlawfully withheld and unreasonably delayed approval of Florida's program. And we think this violates federal law. So we're. So we're asking a federal judge to order the FDA to put an end to that delay and to approve Florida's program. Uh, included in the lawsuit are claims under the Federal Freedom of Information Act. In early July, ACA filed a FOIA request seeking records from the FDA to increase transparency on their approval process. Under the act, the FDA had 30 working days to respond to our request. And I don't think you'll be too surprised, we still have not received a response to our, our request. So the clock's been ticking. Uh, we have a right to know what the FDA has been doing the last two years uh, to ensure uh, that they are, are they putting politics over patients? Are they putting the interest of big pharma over the interest of average Floridians um, and taxpayers? And that's what we need uh, to find out. So we've been continuing to push for transparency. Here's the, well, why are we here? Because this is a distribution facility. All this stuff is ready to go at this point. It's turnkey. We have people that are dealing with the Canadian um, uh, companies. Uh, we will have them, they can be brought here. They get labeled properly, inspected, and then they can then be used um, in the general public. Obviously, Florida is gonna buy a lot of these for our programs. It's gonna save us a huge amount of money. So all this stuff is, is locked and loaded, ready to go, and it has been ready to go for quite some time. So we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. We've done everything that we need to do uh, to get this moving. And I think it's really, really important. I mean, especially when you see you know, what's happened, particularly over the last year and a half, you know, with some of the stuff with, with big pharma, some of the things they put out on these vaccines and all this other stuff. People want transparency and we need to have the truth on all this stuff. And so this is an example of ways to be able to access medications at a much cheaper price uh, by removing some of, uh, some of the bureaucracy, some of the restrictions, and some of the red tape. You know, we also did an executive order recently where our agencies, when they negotiate, uh, are, you know, basically cutting out these middlemen because these middlemen charge a lot of money and they pass those costs on consumers. So we're looking at all different ways we can act to be able to, to help folks. And so today's lawsuit, I think, is very, very important. You know, we, we think this is urgent and we think we deserve a response very quickly. And so I know the attorney general's team is, is, in, is going to be in court on this and are going to work really hard to get good relief for the people of the state of Florida. So this is yet another way where we're innovating and leading the country. No one was talking about this until we stepped forward, passed our legislation several years ago, submitted our plan, very well thought out plan, to the Trump administration, and then have been waiting now under the Biden administration. But a bunch of other states have followed suit and have tried to follow. You know, and I'd, I hate to, I'd hate to think that you know, the Biden administration would not approve it just because it's Florida, because they have issues you know, with Florida politically. I hope that that's not the case, because on issues like this, this will benefit people you know, of all walks of life, regardless of any, any political persuasion. So hopefully they'll just do the right thing. Uh, it's unfortunate that we had to do this, but at the end of the day, uh, we've waited long enough, and we've been very patient. And we've, uh, we've, they, we've provided information when they've asked for it, but yet we've not gotten uh, a response. And so if you're for doing this and you say you want us to be able uh, to do this under a law that's been in existence for almost 20 years, well, then now's the time to stand up and, and, and make that very clear. And if you think about what we're seeing, you know, our, our drug pr prices are twice, three times, depending on the drug, way higher. Uh, than the average price of drugs um, in, in, in other parts uh, of the world and in other countries. And so uh, we're dealing with PBM markups. 
uh, that obviously uh, does it, but then access to other markets uh, will, will be very, very good. So we want to be able to have accountability. We want to be able to defend the taxpayer, and I'm happy that we're taking action today. I remember being here. I mean, when were we here last time? It was like a May of last year. Yeah, so we were here last spring, of the spring of 2021, and we were hoping that we would get a response. And then that's when later the president issued his executive order saying this is something that he was telling the FDA to move forward with. So we thought, man, maybe maybe we got some uh, some movement here. And then we waited, waited, waited. I think the FDA, what did they say eventually? Like, uh, oh, we'll be with you like in the spring of 22 was like their initial thing. So like literally they approved, they say do it in the summer of 21. We try to get moving on it and they'll say, okay, we're gonna address it many months later. So that's just dragging your feet and that's not the way we want um, uh, government to operate. So uh, we're happy to, to be here. Uh, we shouldn't be here, but but we're happy that we're not just going to take this lion down. So we'll hear from some other folks. So, Attorney General. Thank you, Governor.